Good evening and welcome to Eden United Methodist Church. Good Friday service from beautiful downtown Eden, New York. Sunday morning's egg hunt will be at 10.30 in the morning and our service, Easter service, starts at 11 a.m. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, your your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ, was filled high upon the cross so that that he might might draw draw the the whole world world to himself. Grant Grant that that we, who glory in this death death for our salvation, salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. him. Through Through Jesus Jesus Christ Christ our our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. Beth Campbell, and I will be reading part of today's scriptures. May you be blessed as you give attention to the reading of God's word. From Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12, the suffering and glory of the servant from the New International Version. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told they will see and what they have not heard they will understand. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. 
Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Hello. My name is Lori Motak, and I will be reading part of today's scripture. I am reading Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises, and you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. To you, in you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of fashion encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. 
before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn. He has done it. Our next reading is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 25. These were the ones that I thought were going to be a part of the reading a couple of weeks ago. This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, a sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere and f- heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold un- <laughs> unswervingly to the hope we profess for who For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. We will continue to hear the passion story read by uh, uh, several members of our congregation and recorded. In between each one of those readings, we'll extinguish one of the candles. As we get to the final reading, it is the one in which Jesus dies, which is what we celebrate, remember. Celebrate is a weird word for that one. Remember on Good Friday. We remember the sacrifice that our God has made on our behalf. We remember the toll that our sin and our stubbornness has made on our God. So let us continue in listening to the story of Christ's passion. Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, he drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Melchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? (laughs) 
So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had been given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, are not you also one of the man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers, officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I have said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But I have spoken rightly. Why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so they might not be defiled and might eat some Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not the law for us to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he would die. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus <clears throat> and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? You, your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. 
if my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come to the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is the truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime with him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. this, Pilate sought to release him. But the religious authorities cried out, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. He handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on either side, and Jesus in between them. Pilate also wrote the title and put it on the cross. It said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title as the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and in Greek. The, ch uh, the chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written what I have written.
When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, they parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Our next hymn is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross.
Like a good Fanny Crosby hymn. Michelle asked before uh, the service if we had sung that hymn. I, I know it really well, but I don't remember actually choosing it for the three years that I've been here, but maybe I did because I really love Fanny Crosby. She has a way of talking about how to approach God that I think is helpful. Uh, she's the author of Thine Be the Glory, and um, what is the other one? Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And those are powerful reminders of how we are to come before the cross. This next part of our service is yet another way to practice that, how to come before the cross. It's a series of laments. They're called Christ's Laments Against his faithless church. It might seem like strong language, but there is definitely some truth that we have moments in which we are not always faithful. And so this is the time where we both remember the story in prayer in another way, and where we seek God. The response will be on the screen, either at home on your computer or here in the church. To each one of the laments, it is holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal one, one have, have mercy upon, upon us. us. I led you through the desert 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body the bread of heaven, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. 
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I made you branches of my vineyard and gave you the water of salvation. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar and gall and pierced with a spear the side of your Savior. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and mighty, holy holy and immortal one, one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, but you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to the land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scorned, mocked, and beaten me. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and and mighty, holy holy and and immortal immortal one, one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys to the kingdom, but you you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on a cross. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and mighty, holy holy and and immortal one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. My peace I gave which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a servant. But you draw a sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and mighty, holy holy and and immortal one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sake. But you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you. But you close your hearts to guidance. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and and mighty, holy holy and and immortal one, one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. I called you to go and bring forth fruit but you cast lots for my clothing. I prayed that all, that you all may be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and and mighty, holy holy and and immortal immortal one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen people Israel, but you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. Holy Holy God, God, holy holy and mighty, holy holy and and immortal immortal one, have have mercy mercy upon us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, but you did not visit me. Holy Holy God, holy and mighty, holy holy and and immortal immortal one, one, have have mercy mercy upon upon us. us. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we move to our final hymn, I said at the end of last night's service that when we start the service on Thursday, it doesn't conclude until Sunday. So once the hymn is over, I'm going to invite you to leave quietly from the sanctuary. 
this is meant to be probably one of the most somber services that we have in the Christian year. It is from this moment until sun sets, actually, on Saturday, that we are to abstain from all sorts of things because our Lord is in the tomb. He is dead. That is the moment that we have moved into now. And so as we join in this final hymn, I'm going to announce it, "'Tis finished, the Messiah dies." May we hear, may we see, may we read, may we experience all of the words that we have heard this night in a different way as we go forward into the night.